Dory, yes Dory, the innocent bluefish that captured our hearts through Pixar's Finding Nemo finally got the sequel she's always deserved. And we thank Pixar Animation Studios, although it took a little gap of 13 years for them to come up with Finding Dory. The flick turned out to be heartwarming and pretty nostalgic, and it was just a few decimal points shy of the prequel's IMDB rating. 13 years for a storyline that happens just over a year after Nemo reunites with Marlin. As a token of our appreciation to Dory, voiced gracefully by Ellen DeGeneres, allow us to take you through 20 interesting facts associated with Finding Dory. Fact 1. The wacky wannabe introvert octopus Hank has only seven tentacles, primarily because the animators realized they could not fit eight onto his body. The movie brings this into the picture as Dory calls him a septopus, a brilliant override to avoid fingers being pointed. More interestingly, his backstory was rewritten for the missing limb. For similar reasons in the classic sci-fi film It Came Beneath the Sea 1955, special effects genius Ray Harryhausen was only able to create a stop-motion giant octopus with six arms. Fact 2. Hayden Rowlands replaces Alexander Gould as the voice of Nemo due to having outgrown his original role since Finding Nemo, although Gould does have a cameo as Passenger Carl. Although the graceful voice of Dory was none other than that of Ellen DeGeneres. Fact 3. The setting of the film was changed from an aquatic park to a marine biology institute after the controversial documentary Blackfish 2013 was screened for the crew of Pixar. Blackfish is a sad documentary of a killer whale, Talikum, that was held captive for amusement. Fact 4. This film marks Idris Elba's last of three Disney films in 2016 after Zootopia and The Jungle Book, in which all are voice roles of animal characters. Fact 5. Finding Dory could have been a 2015 hit had it not been postponed for the release of Pixar's The Good Dinosaur. Fact 6. Along with Fluke and Rudder, there is a third sea lion at the Marine Institute named Gerald. Interestingly enough, Gerald was the name of the pelican that almost swallowed Marlin and Dory in Finding Nemo, only to be stopped by Nigel. Social networks like 9gag has already begun demanding a third sequel based on Gerald. Fact 7. This is the third Pixar film where the supporting character of the prequel grabs the spotlight as the lead character. Single-Eyed Mike of Monsters University and Mater of Cars 2 were the other characters who enjoyed a lead role by, let's say, promotion. Fact 8. It is the little details that sometimes amuse audiences. Notice, the truck has a sticker on the back that says, Share the road, don't be shellfish. Fact 9. In the Spanish dubbed version screened in Mexico, the voice of the intercom at the Marine Life Institute is performed by Dr. Rodolfo Neri Vela, a Mexican scientist and astronaut that has worked with NASA. Fact 10. Whereas, in the Swedish dubbed version, the voice of the intercom in the Marine Life Institute is performed by Jonas Wallström. Wallström is a famous Swedish animal expert, owner of the aquarium at the outdoor zoo Sasken. He's also the owner of a sushi restaurant. Fact 11. At the time of Finding Nemo's production, Pixar were not able to animate octopi since they don't have any bone structure, despite the film still featuring jellyfish, which also lacks bone structure. By the time the sequel had come out, all was figured out, along with other things Pixar had been incapable of animating the past decade. Fact 12. This is Pixar Animation Studios' 17th feature film. Fact 13. Going by the numbers, Ellen DeGeneres, who first voiced Dory for Finding Nemo, campaigned for years for a sequel, never realizing that the sequel would turn out to be Dory's story. Because a lot of kids will likely be seeing Finding Dory first, they didn't want to rely on the history of Finding Nemo. You can watch the films in either order and still have an enjoyable experience. Fact 14. Just keep swimming is a mantra that is such a genuine, lovely sentiment in the film, and it seemed so important to who Dory is, so they wanted to make it personal to her and connected to what would Dory do. The power is in those two things combined together. And then, there is also the more subtle theme of rescue, rehabilitation, and release. Fact 15. From a poetic perspective, the film was a critical and commercial success, grossing over $1 billion worldwide, becoming the first Pixar film to cross this mark since 2010's Toy Story 3. Fact 16. This is the third Pixar movie to have a female protagonist after Brave and Inside Out. Feminists, this is a compliment, and please don't get offended by it. Fact 17. Hank and his penchant for escaping is based on the fact that octopuses are some of the smartest and most intelligent invertebrates around, and many octopi in aquariums have a penchant for escaping from their pens or tanks. The latest example of this is Inky from the New Zealand Aquarium. Fact 18. The license plate on the truck is CALA113. A113 appears in all Pixar movies as a reference to the room of the California Institute of the Arts where many of the animators of Pixar Studios attended. This is widely regarded as an attempt to show the token of gratitude by the animators to their humble beginnings. 
Fact 19, it appears that Pixar endorses the Netflix and chill notion, for this will be the first Pixar film to be streaming on Netflix. All of the previous Pixar films, with the exception of A Bug's Life, were broadcast on Stars. Fact 20, and lastly, this is the first Pixar follow-up film where Pixar voice legend John Ratzenberger has a different role from the previous. In Finding Nemo, he voices a school of moonfish who form shapes and help Marlin and Dory escape to Sydney, while in Finding Dory, he voices a crab named Bill that Dory and Hank meet at the Marine Institute. Looking back, it's rather safe to assume that Pixar has always had a formula for impressive sequels. The attention to detail, investment for technical innovations, working around storyline loopholes without sweeping them under the rug. Unlike bad sequels of several popular films which do not deserve to be mentioned here, the studio does not take the audience for granted while building the screenplay. While you enjoy these interesting facts, do let us know in the comments if there's anything we've missed out. Thanks for watching.